So, the most powerful rocket to leave Earth since the Saturn V, which took men to the moon a generation ago, has blasted off on its maiden flight from Florida. Falcon Heavy is the latest launch by private space flight company SpaceX, and it's carrying an unusual payload, a Tesla sports car owned by the man behind both companies, the billionaire Elon Musk. Uh, so joining us now to talk about this launch uh, from Cape Town is Per Vimmer, an explorer and founding astronaut of Virgin Galactic, and uh, he's also a friend of Elon Musk. So welcome to you, Per Vimmer. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Uh, before this launch, it was billed as being a bit risky. So, so far, so good. How much of an achievement is that? Oh, this is absolutely a colossal achievement. Uh, it's it's at the same level as its weight and and uh, and the name Falcon Heavy. This is truly trailblazing what we're seeing here to to get uh, effectively what is today the biggest uh, heaviest lifting uh, rocket into space uh, and succeeding in a private capacity, uh, you know, outside government uh, hands is is absolutely fantastic. So truly, truly impressive for what has been done here. And, and we, we now know that uh, 64 tons is now possible to put into, into space. Uh, fantastic. Well, yes, that is a huge amount, isn't it? It has an immense thrust. So give us an idea of what possibilities that potentially opens. It certainly opens a lot of, a lot of potential. I mean, uh, first of all, in the thrust side of things, you, you're looking at 23 million uh, newtons of thrust. It is enormous. It's the equivalent of 18 uh, Boeing 747s standing right behind them. So you can imagine how that must feel. In terms of what it opens for, certainly it allows for uh, much, much bigger satellites to get, uh, get into space. Um, and that would certainly be good news for the likes of uh, Inmarsat or Intelsat, who have actually previously signed up on... Uh, on uh, SpaceX on, on this particular mission. Uh, they, they pulled the orders again because things were getting a little bit delayed. The history behind this was, and mm -hmm. the, the program was talked about in 2004. It was announced in 2011 with the hope of launching in 2013. Got delayed by five years, but hey, it's worth waiting for big rockets uh, in, in my view. And I'm sure there'll be customers again showing up. I'm also sure that the American uh, intelligence agencies would, and defense uh, department would have uh, great interest in this so they can put a lot of kit up there. So no doubt there is a market for this. Um, it is a private enterprise, SpaceX. So whilst the Elon is smiling and uh, it's fun to put a car up into space, it is actually also a great business. But it's great to see if you can turn great business uh, into pushing the frontiers of uh, what is possible for humankind. And as an explorer, as an adventurer, I, I love that. I love pushing the boundaries and I'm so happy to see Elon succeed today. Well, yes, and just to linger on the commercial side a little bit longer, to what extent, then, is this launch part of a bid to do some of NASA's work? And how much is it a sign that commercial organisations uh, are, are taking over in, in the space exploration and experiment, uh, experimentation area from the state, do you think? Well, the successful launch today will actually have uh, interesting uh, ramifications and uh, even also political implications. Uh, because the uh, NASA is actually developing a, uh, a very, very powerful rocket uh, program as well, the SLS. And, uh, and obviously that's got huge budget attached to it. Uh, but interesting, look, if you look at the operating expenses of this, uh, the SLS is estimated to cost about a billion dollars per launch. Uh, so it, it's very expensive. Elon's rocket here would, uh, would set you back uh, probably about 90, 90 million. So about a, a more than a 90% discount on, on it, to be honest. And, and that might put it to question in, in Congress and other places, should we now go and spend all this money on SLS? Now that we know that private enterprise, um, in case here, SpaceX, has actually come up with a rocket that's much cheaper and clearly capable of, of a very successful launch. So no doubt this, this will have implications and will, uh, will create great debate in, within politics and within the space community. Uh, for me, as, a, as an adventurer, I just think it's great. The more, the more space, the better. Uh, great to see that he's proven it. I know Elon's been through uh, the ups and downs, and it's just wonderful to see somebody succeed like this. Well, yes, and uh, let's talk about the exploration bit a little bit more, seeing as that is your particular speciality as well. As you know, your friend Elon Musk hopes that one day uh, he'll be able to use this rocket to help colonise Mars. Do you agree that that's a, a real possibility? Um, it is certainly a dream. It is certainly a far-fetched dream. And uh, I like the words that Elon has said. He would love to die on Mars, uh, just not on impact. 
Uh, I think that's very true. It, uh, it's pro likely probably to be a one-way ticket, to be honest. So he may want to wait uh, till he's very, very old. Uh, it does take quite a bit of time to get to Mars. You, you'll probably be looking at uh, 14, 18 months with, with current technology. Uh, to live on Mars and to actually inhabit Mars, I think, is, is a very, very, very big challenge because Mars is very hostile. It's, it's one thing going up into space for a limited period of time. It's another thing being on, on the International Space Station where we actually have our equipment and stuff. It's a whole different ball game in terms of distance, uh, size, capacity, fuel, everything uh, to actually bring stuff up to Mars. Uh, it's not just one mission and it's not just a, a couple of billion dollars. It is absolutely expensive. It's pushing science to the limits, and um, I don't know whether I'm going to see it in my lifetime, but uh, I love the dream, and I certainly hope uh, Elon will succeed, uh, if not on a one-way ticket, which I'm sure he'll be happier, happier about. And a quick word on his sense of panache, if you like. What do you make of the showmanship here? His own cherry red Tesla car uh, strapped to the top of the rocket with a space suited mannequin inside, and uh, David Bowie's Space Odyssey on a loop as well. What do you make of that little twist? <laughs> No, I, I think it's a, it's a very nice human twist uh, uh, coming from somebody who's actually a super talented engineer. And, and you would think that uh, the engineers would just, just focus on the science. But I, I really think it's wonderful to see that human touch, putting somebody in that looks like a spaceman, star man, and, and with the music and, and the Tesla clouds, it ties very nicely into his other passion. So, no, beautiful. I mean, uh, that's, that's how to do it. Hats off. Well, hats off indeed. Per Vimmer, uh, good to talk to you. Thanks so much indeed for, for sharing your views with us tonight. Thank you.